Good morning. Top of the day to you, sir. I don't know why I wanted to say that, but we are out in our high tunnel picking our tomatillos or tomatillas, however you may pronounce it. We are making gorgeous green salsa and this is the first and the most important main ingredient. So we're out here picking a whole bunch of these today. They always do really fabulous here in Alaska. I am not sure why they're in our high tunnel and they usually just soar. They get about eight feet tall. We prune them near the end of the season and that way they will actually fill out because you want them to be ripe when you go to pick them and we just barely have long enough of a season. If you're not familiar with these, they kind of look like a tomato, but they don't taste at all like a tomato. They're more kind of citrus. I don't know how to explain it. They're more acidic and they have, they have a really, really nice flavor in my opinion. These are two a little bit smaller. We're going green, purple, yellow, and I believe another variety right on the end here. This was a strange year. We had some seriously hot weather at the beginning of the summer and then it switched to a cooler summer, but we still have yet to have our hard frost and we are in October. So that has made this season for these plants really good. And unfortunately, I have been a neglectful gardener and I have not gotten in here and done some pruning like I needed to. So I am finding just a teeny tiny bit of rot, but that's okay. The rest of them are good and we're in here now and we've got to get them all harvested. Let's try it. I'm not sure what variety this is, but this one is so sweet. We've been eating this one throughout the season. It's actually not as, not as potent as these ones. It's really, really mild. This one on the end is a funny shape. It's, I can't remember the name right now, but it, it's really cool looking. And I have a purple one back here I'm gonna grab. And I find the purple ones don't actually turn purple unless you have a longer season and they're exposed to quite a bit of more sunlight. You can see this one only turned purple where it pushed out of the husk. So you do remove, you remove the husk when you go to process these, but probably just gonna start picking them. These plants grow super well. There is really nothing special that we do on our part. I start them inside in the spring months inside the cabin and then we transplant them out here and we just use a lot of compost manure specifically and we put some all-purpose fertilizer i put some organic like nitrogen and also phosphorus or bone meal to kind of help with the flowering process and these just grow they grow really really well wow look how yellow those are so Tomateos, they're actually a pretty cool fruit, I think they are. Errol and I, growing up, or when we first moved out together, we used to buy these from the grocery store and we would make pico de gallo out of them, which is like a salsa. And then later on, when we started growing these, when we lived in Oregon, we changed over to making green salsa, or they call it salsa verde. You might see it in the grocery store in those little cans. And green salsa is the best. I like it a lot more than red salsa. I think it's because of these tomatoes, they give it a really awesome flavor and it's my go-to topping. So we're gonna have a lot this year. Tomatoes did great. That one didn't do great. I don't remember anything before I met you because you just stole my heart. Oh, that's really cute. This is a smaller one, but. Beauty, some of those cone ones. Look at that one. It's a big one. Look at how many seasons were that they rot. Because I didn't get to them. Yeah, well, just cut that piece off. I'm a bad gardener. I'm not sure what variety this was, but we had one plant that I came in here and checked on, and it was just making these, like, huge apple-sized tomatoes, but I didn't get in here quick enough. They split, and they've started to decay. So <laughs> that's why you really got to be on top of your stuff, and I... I just wasn't this year, so that's a result. Hey, that one's still good though. We finished up, we harvested 10 gallons, which is awesome. And it's time to make some salsa. We're also tackling our salsa today. We have a bunch of frozen tomatoes. 
Our tomatoes did pretty good this year, but I was a little neglectful with them too. I did not prune them. I figured I'd just see how that worked out. And it didn't work out that well. I actually had quite a bit of them rot. So we lost quite a bit of them, but we still have a lot. I mean, this is a lot of tomatoes. In fact, we have a little bit of a shortage of pots here. So we're gonna see how we can figure this out. These have been ripened mainly inside the house and then frozen so we can make our tomato sauce all at one time. So I've got a whole bunch of tomatoes in here. And I'm also adding some fennel that we have from the garden. And I blanched and froze our basil earlier in the season because we don't have basil anymore now. Just gonna split that up. Then I'm also adding some dried mushrooms. This is gonna be a first for us this year. I haven't done this in the past, but I'm thinking it's gonna add a really nice flavor. And all of this is actually going to be strained and kind of blended once it's cooked down. Eric's gonna get some onions and garlic in here in just a little bit. We're gonna get these over to our camp chef, get them heating up and then move on to our salsa. start on our salsa here and a couple years ago we started roasting it it's kind of roasting we're not doing it in the oven all we're doing is using hot cast iron skillets and we're throwing the ingredients in there and we're kind of browning them before we cook them down and blend them for our salsa so that's what we're going to do again this year we're starting with the onions we got garlic we got jalapenos cilantro it's gonna be a good salsa batch this year So every time we roast the batch, I'm putting more olive oil in the pan. We got a lot to do. And as I'm roasting them, I'm transferring to the pot that we're gonna start cooking them in. And when I get a little more in there, more tomatoes, uh, we're gonna turn that pot on. We're gonna start cooking down the salsa. Our salsa is coming along nicely, but these onions are definitely challenging to peel. I'm trying to not waste that outer layer. The garlic is really hard to peel right now too because it is, it's pretty fresh, so to speak. You know, we've had it curing, but it's not that old. So these layers are just a nightmare, but how can you complain about fresh garlic and onions? We're gonna add them to our tomatoes. I see they've shrunken down and we can add more to the pots over there. holding off on adding some of the herbs until tomorrow, but I am gonna add some of this Cuban oregano that we have. It is very potent. I believe it's a zone 11 plant, so I actually can't overwinter it here. My neighbor is kind enough to do that for me. So we have a lot of this to use. It doesn't hold up that well to drying. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to use it in some of our canning projects. And we have found throughout the years of canning, Eric and I tend to be a little more like simple with our canning recipes, but the more you add to it, it just, like totally creates magic. So we're trying to add a lot to this tomato sauce, especially because in Alaska, your tomatoes are not as flavorful as they would be down south. That is there too, right? <laughs> 
I forgot to show you the sound that these make when they're frozen. I don't know why, but I think it's it's pretty funny. They're like as hard as a rock. Part of me thinks that a tomato should probably never be frozen, but it's just what we have to do. And I actually started nibbling on this one and it is quite good. It reminds me of a tomato popsicle. Well, we just learned that 10 gallons of tomatoes takes an extremely long time to roast. So it's getting chilly and it's getting late in the evening, but we're continuing on our salsa. We have two pots. I'm gonna kind of level them off and I'm gonna start adding more ingredients. We're gonna do cilantro that we have frozen. We're gonna do lime, vinegar, and we're gonna do salt and pepper to taste. And we're gonna get this cooked for just a little bit longer. And then we're gonna let it cool off and we're gonna blend it all. All right, we are combining pots here, and then we're gonna push the pause button for tonight. We need this liquid to cool significantly before tomorrow, as well as the salsa before we can actually proceed with canning it, so. Ooh, this is really heavy. I'm gonna see if I can pour this in here. Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna let this go for just a tad bit longer. I'm trying to get a lot of that moisture off so we don't have too watery of a tomato sauce, and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Welcome back everybody. We have a storm blowing out there, but we got work to do. So we're blending the salsa and this is like the fun part. We're blending it, it's turning out beautiful. You don't really have to blend it for too long since all the ingredients are already really soft. We're gonna do a taste test. We're gonna add some more ingredients if we need to. And then it's time to can. <laughs> I think it's half inch, half inch, right? Quarter inch headspace, and then they only gotta go for 15 minutes in the water bath. Ready to can? Let's can. It smells like a very good Mexican restaurant out here, and that's impressive considering we're in Alaska, but we've already taste tested this salsa, and it's good. It honestly tastes exactly like the little cans you would buy from the grocery store, which I'm definitely okay with. Last year, I don't think we used lime. This year we did. Turned out good, so we got these heating up. They're not simmering or everything, anything like that. They're just hot. And we're gonna put them in pints. Doing a lot of salsa this year. Forty-eight jars of salsa. This is awesome. So we're gonna take a rag with a little vinegar on there, clean off every rim, put some lids and bands on them, and they're going in the water bath there for fifteen minutes. We're moving right along to our tomato sauce. It has sufficiently cooled. There's still a lot of moisture in there because Eric and I do not grow all canning tomatoes or Roma tomatoes. It's only about half of what we grow. So there's a lot of moisture that we have to evaporate off, but we're gonna run it through this strainer. This is a Cabela's meat grinder. We've had it for years and a long time ago, we bought the strainer, the strainer attachment. So you can do applesauce, like pumpkin, berries, all sorts of cool, cool things. I don't even think it's honestly for sale anymore, but we're still using it. That's how we're going to be making our tomato sauce. The sauce is going to end up in the first bowl. I'm going to pour everything down this hopper and then these skins and extra things are going to come out here and we have some plans for that. Okay, here we go.
the strainer that I was just talking so highly about went kaput on us. Um, we are trying to figure out what we're going to do. Plan B. That strainer, uh, that uh, machine that we've had, we've had it for probably close to like eight years and it's done quite a bit of meat and, and a lot of uh, other things. So I think what happened was there was a little washer and it got some of the tomato juice down in the machine. We heard it sparking. That's never happened before, so I'm not sure if it's still working or not. So plan B, I think, is we're gonna be using our blender with the remains. What I usually do is I'll strain them again through the machine. And then what you end up with is just this stuff and it's very dry. Sometimes I give it to the chickens. Another thing that I usually do is I will actually add water and cook them down quite a bit longer to extract more flavor because the peels have a lot of flavor in them. But this year I'm gonna try something totally different. I'm actually gonna cook what I have remaining right now, which is a little bit of olive oil in a pot, get it really warm and bubbly. And then we're gonna try and blend it and add it to our tomato sauce to help be like a thickener to it. So. We'll see how it goes. I haven't tried it before. <laughs> We've got our tomato sauce heating up as well as the mixture that we were not able to strain. Eric tied up these awesome little bundles for us of oregano and thyme. There's still little flower buds on there. Not a concern. Those usually are really fragrant and have a lot of the aroma of the plant too. So we're gonna be putting these into the sauce and then we will fish them out later. And then in this mixture, all I'm doing is just adding a bunch of olive oil. I have seen folks make tomato powder, concentrated tomato sauce from the peels. And I've never tried that, but I'm, I'm kind of excited about this. And I think, I think it's gonna work and add as a really good thickener. Last batch of salsa coming out of the water bath canner. We're switching over the pressure canners. We're doing tomato sauce. Look at that beauty. Our tomato sauce has been going for a while. I actually blended this one with our immersion blender instead of the blender. It works better for hot liquids and it did an amazing job. It's the thickest tomato sauce I've ever seen. And we've been making it for seven years, so I hope I hope we get it right this time. I'm gonna strain out or just pull out these bunches. Crazy looking herbs right here. Those are gonna go in our compost. Ah! I don't know if this is all gonna fit. This is the thicker one. This is the one that's still kind of evaporating some of that moisture off, but it's a good, it's already a good thickness too. So we're gonna combine this and see how it goes. Okay, plan B, that didn't work. <laughs> this sauce looks amazing and it tastes good. We've been trying it, so like I really, okay, well we don't want that in there, but <laughs> I really can't get over the thickness. It's perfect to me. That's the perfect thickness. So we are ready to can. We have both of our pressure canners completely full. Eric and I are pressure canning this pasta sauce. That's really what it is more. I use the term tomato sauce, but it's honestly more like a pasta sauce because we added so many other ingredients. You can water bath it. We water bath it all the time. You do have to run it for a little bit longer of a time when you pressure can it. I believe it's 11 pounds, 20 minutes. Tomatoes are very acidic in nature and that is why it's safe for water bathing, but they recommend pressure canning when you start adding a whole bunch of stuff, kind of like we did, the mushrooms, the fennel, all that stuff. That all decreases the acidity. And honestly, I added oil and I did leave the peels in there chunked up. So it's a real chunky sauce and that's why we're gonna be pressure canning it. That is a beautiful pint of tomato sauce. We ended up with 36 pints of tomato sauce plus the salsa equals 84 pints that we did in one day. New record for us.
This is two days of hard work and it is amazing. We've never canned this much, like Eric was saying, in one day. A lot of work goes into this from starting the seeds to growing the food, to cleaning it, to grow, processing it and preserving it. Um, but this is awesome. In fact, last year, we were fortunate enough to have a little bit of carryover. That never happens, ever, with tomato sauce. We've never had extra from a whole year. Same thing with our salsa. And we actually have one little jar of salsa, green salsa from last year, and I have four tomato sauces left, which is just amazing. A lot of the times when we're preserving, we are only doing enough for like a year or a little bit under. Sometimes you have abundance and it carries over, which is just, I, I don't know why I can't say it enough, but it's just incredible. Now for the most challenging part, we have to find room in our cabin for all of this. So that's gonna be a struggle for sure. We hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'm gonna start bringing these inside.